Success is defined as a person or thing that achieves desired aims or attains prosperity, or it is the accomplishment of an aim or purpose. One way or another, we all want to be successful. We all want to see our dreams come to fruition and our aspirations to become our reality. We all want to achieve success in one endeavor or another. For many, the most defining question of life is how to become successful. But in order to answer that question, one has to be able to measure success. What is the measure of success? To an athlete, success might be measured in points or yards or hits. To a businessman, success might be measured by profit margin, by business expansions, or by market share. For the believer in Jesus Christ, the measure of success has different indicators for sure but we often account them like everything else. Maybe we would say the number of people I have told about Jesus, the number of people I have brought to my church, the number of Bibles or pieces of literature I've handed out. For the ministry, it might be the number of churches started, the number of people preached to, or the size of their congregation. But what if we have it all wrong when it comes to the measure of spiritual success? What if success or failure as a child of God is not left in our hands or cannot be measured or equated from our finite vantage point? To all outward indication, the death of a 27-year-old missionary before he even really ever spoke to the people he was sent to reach is a failure. But in the hands of God, the sacrificial death of just such a young man can be turned into an astounding success. I'm Ronnie Brown, and this is Forgotten. Robert Germain Thomas was born in Reander, in the prowess community of Wales in 1839. As a boy of six years old, he moved to Landover, where his father became a minister in a local chapel. His childhood education was at Landover College. At 16, he attended Principal Academy in London. And a year later, at 17, he preached his first sermon at Hanover Church entitled, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. When he was 18, he gained provisional acceptance at New College in London, England. It was there that he distinguished himself as a linguist in such studies as Greek, Latin, and French, and he had a great aptitude for the Chinese language. After graduating college in 1863, Thomas immediately married Caroline Godfrey. He was ordained into the work of the ministry, and he was commissioned as a missionary for the London Mission Society. As newlyweds, they, along with 300 passengers, set out for Shanghai, China. This was especially dangerous because disease spread quickly among the close confines of such an extended voyage. And although some passengers did contract smallpox, the Thomas couple did arrive safely in Shanghai. But their arrival could not have been at a worse time. They arrived in the coldest month of the year, December. Also during that time, there was a heightened hatred of foreigners. There were many reports of the murders of otherwise peaceful residents because of the racial tensions that were at an all-time high. Robert and his new bride found safe lodging with the local head of the London Missionary Society, William Merehead, and they began to be acclimated to their new foreign surroundings. But tragically, after being there only three months, and while Robert Thomas was away looking for better lodging for the summer months, Carrie died suddenly from complications arising from a miscarriage. The loss of his bride and unborn child crushed Robert and became too much for the young man to bear. It was not long after that he resigned his position for the London Mission Society. Thomas took a job as a customs officer in Chifu. This move happened to be providential. For while he was at Chifu, 
Thomas found encouraging friendships from Joseph Elkins of the London Missionary Society and Alexander Williamson of the National Bible Society. These men and their friendship helped Robert through this tragic time of grief. But in Korea at this time, the Prince Regent, Tai Wong Gun, who had long tried to deter the expansion of Western influence in Korea, attempted to wipe out nearly 10,000 Catholic believers that had taken a small foothold in Korea since the late 1700s. The Prince Regent was successful in killing 8,000 of these Catholics, two of which escaped and made their way to the city of Chifu and came to the Williamson's home in search of Bibles. Now, although the Catholic Church held some influence in Korea for many years, these men had never had the opportunity to read a Bible. This great need deeply affected Robert Thomas and rekindled the fire to carry the gospel of Jesus Christ to such a blinded people. It wasn't long before Robert was reinstated to the London Missionary Society and he began to look for a way to take Bibles to the Korean people. Robert was assigned to go with the Admiral Rosé, the commander of the French fleet in the Far East. But the fleet was detoured from Korea when news reached the Admiral that there was trouble in French Indonesia and the boat ended up docking in Saigon. So with hopes dashed suddenly, Robert was stuck in Shifu with a burning desire to reach the Korean people. It was then that the American vessel called the SS General Sherman ported in Shifu. Their intent was to initiate a trade relationship with Korea. Thomas was asked to join them on this venture as an interpreter. Here was his chance, his chance to get into Korea. He gathered as much literature and as many Bibles as he could take on this journey. Now these Bibles were not in the Korean language, but they were in Chinese. Now although some of the characters of these two languages were similar, they were not the same. A person that read Korean and spoke Korean could not necessarily read Chinese. But Robert's hope was that some of the aristocracy of Korea, those who were known to be able to read both Korean and Chinese, might be able to translate the scriptures into the Korean language. In the summer of 1866, they set out for Pyongyang in what is today North Korea. As the ship made its way up the Taidong River, loaded with cotton goods, tin, and glass, Robert Thomas was found on the edge of the boat tossing gospel tracts into the riverbank. Stern warnings were sent from the Korean officials ordering the vessel to turn back at once. The crew of the General Sherman responded to these commands to leave with arrogance. One of the Korean officials along with two other subordinates who were running communications between General Sherman and the Korean government were taken hostage by the American crew. The Korean officials were eventually rescued, but two of the aides were killed during the scuffle. The General Sherman responded by firing cannons and guns at civilians along the river, resulting in seven deaths and five woundings. Now, there is little doubt that the American vessel was the aggressor in the battle. And yet Robert Thomas, who only came to have the opportunity to share the gospel with the Korean people, was helpless to do anything to stop the escalating violence. The governor of Pyongyang province commanded the preparation for battle, sending ships to attack the General Sherman. The American vessel began to retreat down the Taedong River, and although the Korean ships were no match for the firepower of the General Sherman, the American ship ran aground on a sandbar, leaving them stranded and vulnerable. The men of the General Sherman were able to hold off the Koreans for two days, but finally, the Korean military launched burning boats at the General Sherman. And these were small boats loaded with brush that had been dipped in sulfur. And they eventually set the American trading vessel on fire. Among the crew, 14 were shot and killed. Four were burned to death in the ship. And two jumped into the waters to try to swim to shore. Both men met with death as they reached the bank of the river. Thomas was one of these two. At this point, 
There are conflicting reports as to what took place. One report said that Robert Thomas was clubbed to death as soon as he reached the shore. And when his executioner looked for a weapon in his hand, he only found a Bible. In another account, Robert Thomas reached the shore holding a red book in his hand, and he was begging the men to take it from him when he was suddenly beheaded. And yet another says that Robert Thomas came from the waters of the Taedong River, holding a Bible in his hand and shouting to the approaching soldiers, Jesus, 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 and was instantly killed. What took place in the shallows of that river may never really be known. But one thing is clear. Robert Jermaine Thomas, whose heart beat with love for these Korean people, and whose greatest desire was to share with them the wondrous story of God's love found in Jesus, died in those waters, having only shared with them a few desperate utterances. You and I may look at this scene and say, what a failure, what a waste. This was all a tragic mistake. This man's life's purpose was tragically unfulfilled. But the legacy of Robert Thomas does not end on that riverbank. The executioner of the Welsh missionary picked up the soggy books from the riverbank and noticed that the pages were nicely printed, and so he dried out the leaves. The writing was strange and meaningless to him. So he decided to do what Koreans have done for centuries. He papered the outside of his house with the pages of that book. Many years later, someone walking by this man's house finally recognized the Chinese words. Word began to spread about the man's house with a powerful story on its walls. People came from all over the region to read the words on the outside of the man's house. And one by one, people began to believe the words on those pages, coming to faith in Jesus Christ. A church was started, and then another, and then another, and then another. Before 1866, there might have been only a handful of believing Christians, if any. Today, some estimate that there are upwards of 12 million Christians in Korea, having some of the largest congregations in the world. And although Robert Jermaine Thomas is seen as an enemy of the state in North Korea, he is revered as the first Protestant martyr in South Korea and the instrument of God to bring the gospel to that darkened land. Today, many Korean Christians make pilgrimage to Lanover Chapel in Wales thousands of miles away to pay their respects to a man that gave his life so that others might have eternal life. Korean Christians may not know about the country of Wales. They may not know about the history of Wales. But they do know that Wales is the place from where missionary Robert Thomas came to them. In the Gospels, Jesus told a parable of a sower that went out into a field to sow seeds. Some seed fell on hard ground, some fell on rocky ground, some fell on the thorny ground, and some fell on good ground, each producing different results. The point of the story is that the success of the harvest is not in the sower, but in the seed. We are simply instruments used to accomplish God's success. Jesus would explain later that the seed is the Word of God. And when the Word is heard and received, it brings forth fruit, some thirty, some sixty, and some a hundredfold. Forgotten is written and produced by me, Ronnie Brown. You can find out more about this show at ForgottenPodcast.com. And as always, 
Thanks for listening. <laughs>